So they'll be using Arches watercolour paper, it's £140, cold pressed and it's also 100% cotton. I'll be using my masking pen, my size 12 round brush and my size 6 round brush, a cloth and also my Winsor & Newton paints. I'll also be using tube paints, so I've got Cerulean Blue, Payne's Grey and Ultramarine. I'm going to start off by wetting my frog, so I'm wetting the body with clean water. I'm also taking that water down the back legs and the front legs. I'm painting a light wash of the cerulean blue all over the frog. I'm going to make sure that I take that down the back legs and the front legs as well because I want a nice even layer. I do this to get a nice even layer of paint without harsh edges forming within my painting. This is very diluted, this wash. It's got lots of water mixed into it to make it nice and pale. I'm making sure to paint that right to the edges of the frog and also onto the fine details like the toes and get right onto the edges because I don't want any sort of water marks forming. Next I'm taking my ultramarine and I'm dropping that into the frog. I'm concentrating on the front of the frog's head because that's where the colour changes within the frog. I'm also going to use the wet on wet method while this cerulean blue is still wet and paint on the small flecks within the paint the frog's skin as well. I got this second layer on pretty quickly while the paint was still wet because I want to have nice soft blurred edges. I want those two colours to sort of mix into one another so that I'm not getting like a stand out um, colour. I want those two colours to be nice and softly blended together. I painted that darker colour down at the back legs as well and also onto the toes of the frog. <laughs> I let that layer dry a little bit before adding some definition around the leg. So this is some ultramarine mixed with Payne's Grey just to make that colour darker and I'm just using that to go around the leg and add the creases in the leg and I'm popping this onto slightly damp paper because I want those edges to be slightly blurred. <laughs> I'm using a slightly damp brush now just to blur out those edges a little bit more and just to blend those edges so they become soft. Now I'm adding some water onto the back legs. I'm adding some ultramarine because I want the leg to look more of a rounded appearance. So I'm popping that colour onto the outer edges of the legs. I'm also adding a little bit of definition to that back leg. Then I'm going to take the ultramarine and I'm going to use that to define the toes at the back. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading to those back toes. <laughs> I've got some Payne's Grey on my brush now and I'm just using that to define the edges of that leg and just add lots of shadow and lots of depth. This is going to really lift the frog off the page so that it's not just one flat colour. So I'm going to add these little flecks now onto the frog and this is Payne's Grey. It's quite 
undiluted so there's not much water in this. I also made some marks paler than others. Now I'm wetting the back leg and I'm going to drop in some of the cerulean blue so this is quite concentrated it's got less water mixed into it. Then I'm going to wet the front leg and I'm also dropping some of that cerulean blue into the front of the leg. I'm going to define around the sides and the top of the arm here with some Payne's Grey and then I'm going to take some more of the ultramarine and I'm going to drop it into the fronts and around the toes of the arm just to add lots of depth and make that arm look more rounded. I'm going to apply some shadowing and some shading to the edges as well with the Payne's Grey. I'm making sure that I'm working on the wet paper so that I'm getting nice soft blurred edges and those paints can mix together to give a really soft feel. I'm also adding some little marks with the Payne's Grey as well. Then I'm going to outline some of the toes just to add a bit of shading around the bottom. Using my size 12 brush I'm going to wet the front of the frog with some clean water and then I'm going to add some cerulean blue just to give that a little bit more of a rounded appearance. I'm also dropping in some water around the front of the face and I'm going to use some very concentrated ultramarine mixed with Payne's Grey and I'm just going to outline the front of the frog just to make it look more rounded and not so much of a flat shape. It also adds lots of dimension to the frog. I'm applying some clean water to the back of the frog now. Using my size 6 brush I'm painting a wavy line down the back of the frog I'm using slightly diluted Payne's Grey for this and then I'm also going to go around the bottom of the frog. I'm adding some definition around the eye now so I'm using Payne's Grey for this but I'm working on the wet paper so I'm allowing that Payne's Grey to bleed out into the wet areas of the paper and just let it do its own thing. I'm also using quite concentrated Payne's Grey here to make these little marks on the frog because a poison dart frog has loads of these gorgeous little marks and to be honest I didn't really know how to do these but I think they turned out really well so I've mixed in hardly any water with this Payne's Grey. I'm also going to darken up around the eye area with quite concentrated Payne's Grey as well. I'm painting in the eye now with some cadmium yellow. I'm using some clean water now to wet around the frog really carefully. I'm being very careful not to touch the frog because I'm going to be creating a bit of a background and wherever I place the water, if I place the paint down on top of that, the paint is just going to travel into the water. So I don't want any of that background to go onto the frog. I'm just going to drop in plenty of greens into this background so I'm doing a wet on wet method and I'm going to just pop in some different shades of green I'm going to use yellows and some darker greens so I mixed a little bit of Payne's grey in with green to make it super dark. I'm not particularly thinking about the colours that I'm adding into this I'm basically just picking up whatever greens I've got in my palette. I am going a little bit darker closer to the frog because that's going to create like a bit of a shadow and shadows are always darkest closest to the object so I'm wetting areas of this as I go I don't want to wet the whole thing because then areas are just going to dry so I'm just going to take a little moment to carry on dropping in some colours and I love doing wet on wet backgrounds like this I have so much fun with them and I'm not really afraid to do backgrounds like this I think it really helps to add lots of interest to the painting and I have so much fun with this. I'm also adding some yellows because then the yellow is going to mix with the green and make it like a yellow green. I'm also adding a little bit of diluted Payne's Grey because that's just going to mix with the green anyway and create a darker green. 
I'm making sure that as I paint, I'm not allowing the paint to travel further than what the water is, if you get me. So I don't want the paint to go over the edge of the water because otherwise I'm just going to get harsh watermarks. But if the paint stays within the area of the water, then those colours are going to mix together and just create a lovely soft blurred effect. I'm using some concentrated lamp black now just to fill in the eye and I am going over the masking fluid that I've already popped down because I'm going to rub that, that off at the end and that's going to create a little highlight within the eye. I'm also going to paint some shadow at the front of the frog just to make the frog sort of leap off the page and create lots of depth within my painting and um, the best way to make something look realistic is to add shading and shadowing around that object. I'm using a clean cloth now to rub off that mask to reveal a gorgeous highlight within that eye. I'm using my white gel pen now to add highlights to the frog because that then helps the skin of the frog to look wet. I hope you enjoy this tutorial.